2022 was without a doubt an interesting year for cocktail trends. We had the Let's Filter Anything from Budweiser to Tequila in a Brita filter so we can all get drunk without tasting anything. So smart. Then we also got the Starburst Coffee Pot Skinny Margarita with Toaster Jalapeno that kickstarted a trend of making cocktails in coffee pots. Because we all know that boiling spirits and melted candies is the way to make cocktails, right? If you haven't watched that video yet and don't want to lose the faith in humanity you may have left, don't watch it. Then we also got flooded by angry TikTokers complaining about the fact their cocktails were too expensive because it was served over a big block of clear ice to make the glass look full. Damn it guys, we're exposed. We're gonna have to find a new way to scam people in bars. <sighs> And if it wasn't enough, by the end of the year, on November 30th, 2022, artificial intelligence became available to everyone. And we started to see popping AI-generated anything everywhere. And cocktail recipes were amongst that, and it got me curious. I gave it a few shots, and if you are afraid that AI will steal your bartending job, don't be. If you don't know what to ask to chat GPT for a cocktail recipe, chances are you're gonna get something quite crappy. You don't believe me? Ask Nick from Cocktail Chemistry. He gave a challenge to chat GPT to create a cocktail with rice vinegar and sesame oil. What he got in return was a gin sour with one ounce and a half of rice vinegar and half an ounce of sesame oil. <laughs> And the problem I see with AI and these evil TikTok drink influencers, and by the way, can we please stop calling everything a something fluencer? But anyways, the problem I see is the lack of knowledge of the targeted audience on a specific topic and their willingness to believe the first thing they hear or see. And because this type of content is so popular, it made me wonder, are we about to enter a new dark age of cocktail era? So let me know what you think guys in the comments. Is it the end of the craft cocktail culture? On the other hand, when I look at the comments on these posts, between the likes and the praises, I see a lot of people as disgusted as I am, so I think there might be hope that we can still stop the massacre. And for this, I want to do my part and I would love to ask you to help me because I have a plan. So let's make a little channel update and let's talk about what's gonna happen here on Truffles on the Rocks in 2023. I recently asked you here on YouTube and on Instagram to ask me anything and I received so many technical questions about both the basic and the more advanced stuff so we decided this year we would do some kind of a reset on the content, restart from scratch, cover everything and make it in a more organized way. So you can be sure that all the technical questions you may have asked will become the topic of an upcoming video. So I will cover everything from syrups, cordials, techniques, how to build the bar and much more. I will also separate the cocktail making content from what I like to call the mise en place content. This will make it easier for you to search and come back whenever needed. And also, when there will be a complicated mise en place for a specific cocktail, I will post the mise en place on Monday and the cocktail on Friday. This will leave you the whole week to gather the ingredients, make the prep, and make sure you'll be ready to make the cocktail on the weekend. Oh, and as it won't be like that every week, make sure to turn the notifications on so you don't miss the important stuff. I also received a lot of questions about my production setup, the gear I use, how I shoot my videos and take my photos. Bernier's Bar asked me, the thing I'm the most curious about is your filming setup. So curious what it looks like from your POV. Well, my friend, here's what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. It's a very simple setup. We have one camera, one mic, and one key light. There's two lights in the back, one for the background and one for the key light, and that's it, as simple as that. So I have been debating for a while now whether or not I should incorporate some photo video tutorials or behind the scene content here on the channel, and I came to the conclusion that it wouldn't be a good idea. That said, I still wanna share my tips and I think I found the perfect way to do so. You may have seen in the community tab that we've just launched our Patreon. We offer four tiers and with the first one you're gonna get our eternal gratitude. 
With the second one, with the Eternal Gratitude, you're also gonna get a new booklet every month with photos and text of what we've covered the past month on the channel. It will be like gathering every month some pages of a new cocktail book, and if you start to collect them now, at the end of the year, you're gonna have a whole book with all the infos to master your craft and many recipes to test that out. On the other hand, to come back on the photo and video production aspects of things, I created a custom tier for those of you who would like to up their photo and video skills and see how I do what I do. So with this tier on top of the monthly cocktail booklet, you'll receive a one-time download link for a Lightroom preset pack including six presets and you're also gonna have access to monthly tutorials about photo or video. Lastly, I also offer some one-on-one -on -one meetings so you can create the perfect custom cocktail and make your ideas come to life. So if you want to support the channel, the link's gonna be on top of the show notes. Now, before we end this video with answers to some of your questions that were not technical questions that will be answered and covered later this year, I told you you and I could do something to make sure the craft cocktail culture survives in 2023. My plan is actually very simple. All I'm asking you is for you to watch those videos and whenever you feel the content is valuable, share it as much as you can. Knowledge is key for the craft cocktail culture to survive, so spread the word, make sure the people around you know the good information, and that way we have some chances of seeing less crappy shit on TikTok and more good quality cocktails everywhere else. That's it. All right, so now time for some Q&As. Alo Markor asks, have you ever considered doing collaborations with ranked bars in your videos? Yes, and I would also like to make some collaborations with other renowned bartenders that are not content creators. I have a lot of good friends in the industry that has a lot of knowledge to share and I think it would be very interesting for you, but they don't have a platform, so I think here could be very cool, but I'm still working on the format, so we'll see. Next up, yo underscore Instagram asks, on a more personal note, any cocktail bars recommendations around San Sebastian? We are now living in San Sebastian, if you didn't know, now you know, and we've been here for two months, mas o menos, and uh, I have the feeling that craft cocktail is not really popular around here because there are tons of places with the cocktail bar sign on their front door, but all they really do is just mules, gin and tonic and spritz. So we didn't find a proper cocktail bar yet and we are still searching. I saw one speakeasy online that looks legit, but we didn't go yet. So really, I don't know. I don't have any recommendations, so I'm sorry. But if you're watching this and are familiar with the bar scene here in San Sebastian, please let me know if you have any recommendations in the comments below. Yo underscore Instagram also asks, making all these cocktails at home, do you get tipsy now and then? Answer is yes. Next. <laughs> Eric Brin 94 your favorite cocktail? Hmm, that's a question I actually got a lot and I must say it really depends on the mood I'm in. If I feel for something refreshing or if I feel for something spirit forward, my favorite cocktail for a refreshing drink usually is the daiquiri and for the spirit forward cocktail, I really have a hard time deciding between the Manhattan or the Brooklyn, but that's a very similar cocktail. So daiquiri or Manhattan slash Brooklyn for my favorite cocktail. Now, Peter Peter.Roeder, what's your go-to cocktail to make for your friends that have never tried cocktails before? I don't have a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 if I have some friends at home that are not familiar with cocktails and want to try, I would say if they feel for something refreshing, I would go with a sour template with their favorite spirit like a daiquiri if they like rum or a gimlet if they like gin, something like that, something very simple. And if they like something that's more boozy or spirit forward, I would probably go with an old fashioned. I think the classic cocktails are a good way to start when you start with cocktail, but when you start drinking them or making them, so that's why I would start them on classics. Now, Michael Luckner, I'd like to see how to regarding your dog dance shake. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, my friend. Uh, the Duck Dance Shake, it's something I talked about probably once or twice on the channel is when I double shake. I don't think I have some B-roll of that. Basically, it looks like this. <laughs> That's 
really awkward. So that's probably going to be covered in the technique video that we're going to be soon making on the channel. So if you want to see some awkward duck dance move shake, <laughs> make sure to turn the notification on. Next, Tyler Wendland asks, what is the thing you miss the most about Canada besides family? That's a good question. And right off the bat, I would say not having like my marks here. We've been here for a very short amount of time and I have a hard time fighting what I'm used to buy or get, especially for food or cocktail making. While in Canada, it was really easy, sometimes pricey, but easy to get a wide range of things. Here in Spain, or I don't know if it's just a San Sebastian thing, it is pretty limited to the local production ingredients and I find it a little bit complicated. So I would say that would be what I miss the most right now beside family from Canada. Now we have Mark VTRI that asks, you have been moving a bit and now seem settled and I have been filming at a bar. Are you working as a bartender at all these days? No. And actually, I'm not sure I will ever again work full time behind a bar and I don't miss the routine, the night shifts and all that. But sometimes I miss it just like one shift once in a while could be very interesting. So I'm open to guest bartending maybe, but now full time bartender on YouTube. And I'm really happy with that. Smithy Werben, Je sorry, Smithy Werben Jagerman Jensen. Any plans on visiting Germany since you are in Europe? Yes, Germany definitely on the uh, bucket list. But right now we've been in Spain for such a small amount of time. We feel like we have a lot to discover. So I think we're going to concentrate on that country first before um, visiting other countries. But who knows? Maybe uh, we could start a cocktail vlog channel across Europe. Maybe. Good idea or no? Would you like that? Would you like that? <laughs> Anyways, love Germany, would love to visit it, but uh, don't know when yet. Now, as I told you, the vast majority of your questions were technical questions that we will soon answer or cover on the channel. So let's answer just one last question that's more on a personal note. Their Trink Begelther asks, what made you become a bartender and what advice would you give a beginner? That's a very long story, what made me become a bartender. Uh, actually, I became a bartender by necessity and fell in love with the uh, job by accident. And um, <laughs> long story short, that's pretty much it. I had to find a job to make some money while we were having another business and bartending was an opportunity and I really fell in love with that and it became my main thing soon after. What is the best advice I could give a beginner is to master the fundamentals of the craft cocktail industry before going crazy with the mixology and the creativity. I think mastering the basics is the most important to understand the dynamic of what we're doing, how the ingredients work with one another. And I think that will make you a better bartender if you start by mastering the fundamentals. So that's pretty much it for the best advice. So that would be it for this week's video, my friends. Thank you very much for watching. If you're still watching, because I know this was an unusual video, but I had a lot of fun talking to you guys for the first time of the year. This leads me to wish you a happy new year, even though we're a little bit late. I wish you the best. And I also hope that you're going to have a lot of fun with the new way we're going to put the content here on the channel this year. Also, don't forget to pay us a visit on Patreon. If you want to show some support to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already to turn the bell if you want to make sure not to miss the next video and until then thank you very much again have a great day and see you next week